that all our knowledge begins with experience, there can be no doubt. For how is it possible that the faculty of recognition should be awakened into exercise, otherwise than by means of objects which affect our senses, and partly of themselves produce representations, partly rouse our powers of understanding into activity, to compare, to connect, or to separate these, and so to convert the raw material of our sensuous impressions into a knowledge of objects, which is called experience. In respect of time, therefore, no knowledge of ours is antecedent to experience, but begins with it. But, though all our knowledge begins with experience, it by no means follows that all arises out of experience. For, on the contrary, it is quite possible that our empirical knowledge is a compound of that which we receive through impressions, and that which the faculty of cognition supplies from itself, sensuous impressions giving merely the occasion. It is, therefore, a question which requires close investigation, and is not to be answered at first sight. Whether there exists a knowledge altogether independent of experience, and even of all sensuous impressions, knowledge of this kind is called a priori, in contradistinction to empirical knowledge, which has its sources a posteriori, that is, in experience.